parents are often taken aback by the replies their children make to questions from grown-ups. One evening, when my wife and I were away, our children's babysitter, intrigued by the prayer she heard them saying, asked them this question. But what is the difference between your religion and mine? The reply from our eight-year-old daughter was immediate. It's almost the same, except that we study a lot more than you do. <laughs> Far from wanting to offend her babysitter, my little daughter just wanted to underline in her own way the importance that Latter-day Saints attach to the search for knowledge. Joseph Smith declared, it is impossible for a man to be saved in ignorance. He added, the principle of knowledge is the principle of salvation, and everyone that does not obtain knowledge sufficient to be saved will be condemned. This knowledge is founded on understanding the nature of God and Jesus Christ and the plan of salvation that he has prepared to allow us to return to their presence. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. The principle of knowledge has often been misinterpreted by men. The glory of God is intelligence. It surpasses all we can and ever understand with our intellectual capacities. People who try to find God sometimes think that they have to look for him in intellectually complicated concepts. However, our Heavenly Father is always available to us. He adapts to our level of understanding. If he comes to a little child, he will adapt himself to the language and capacity of a little child. God would indeed be unjust if the gospel was only accessible to an intellectual elite. In his goodness, he has ensured that the truth regarding God are understandable to all his children, whatever the level of education or intellectual faculty. In reality, the fact that a principle can be understood even by a child is proof of its power. President John Taylor said, it is true intelligence for a man to take a subject that is mysterious and great in itself and to unfold and simplify it so that a child can understand it. Far from diminishing its impact, purity and simplicity of expression allow the Holy Spirit to witness with greater certainty to the hearts of men. During his earthly ministry, Jesus constantly compared the simplicity and authenticity of his teachings to the tortuous logic of the Pharisees and other doctors of the law. They tried time and again to test him with sophisticated questions, but his replies were always crystal clear and childlike in their simplicity. One day, Jesus' disciples asked him the following question, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of God? Jesus, having summoned a little child, set him in the midst of them and said, Verily I say unto you, Except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. On another occasion, Jesus said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent, and has revealed them unto babes. The Bible has probably been the subject of more interpretations and philosophical debates than any other book. However, a child reading this book for the first time will have at least as much, if not more, chance to understand the doctrine than the majority of those doctors of the scriptures. The Savior's teaching are adapted to everyone. At eight years of age, a child can have sufficient understanding to enter the waters of baptism and make a covenant with God with complete understanding. What would a child understand from reading the story of the baptism of Jesus? Jesus was baptized 
in the river Jordan by John the Baptist. The Holy Ghost descended upon him in a bodily shape like a dove. A voice was heard, Thou art my beloved son, in thee I am well pleased. The child would have a clear vision of what the Godhead is. Three distinct persons in complete unity, God the Father, His Son Jesus Christ and the Holy Ghost.